Morning, welcome back. You're watching This Day Live. Let's have a look at what's making the newspaper headlines now around the world. And I'm joined by the award-winning uh, public health specialist and African affairs analyst, Dorcas Guata. Morning to you, Dorcas. Morning, Gavin. Let's start first with uh, the independence of the UK. Uh, mm. We've been talking about it in the headlines, but it's uh, the meeting of President uh, Vladimir mm. Putin of Russia and uh, President Barack Obama of the US at mm. the, uh, the UN General Assembly uh, yesterday. They disagreed over how to tackle Syria, questions mm. over Russia's alleged intervention in Ukraine and what mm. the, the future is of the country there. I mean, what, what, it was a frosty meeting. Is there any ground for them to, to work on, do you think? Uh, Gavin, I thought this was a very interesting reflection. Um, I, I think Putin makes a point here that actually uh, in one decade, countries can go from enemies to rebels to allies. So actually, are we better off keeping our enemies closer than actually we were at a distance? On that note, were we better off keeping Gaddafi closer than actually eliminating? We would be better off um, working with, um, with Egypt so that we weren't sort of alienating. Look at the mess we're in. So is there a point here about the fact that we could have avoided the catastrophe that we have today had we worked with Assad? That's not in the American blood or terms to work with an enemy, mm -hmm. but I think this is a strong argument for future conflicts. And, you know, there's, there's airstrikes taking place within Syria yes. at the moment from the U.S., and yes. uh, there, there was talk of the U.K. getting involved with that two years ago. It was vetoed down. But remember, two years ago, Assad was the enemy. Now it's IS, and Assad is almost being brought back into the fold to a degree. And Assad is fighting IS, strongly exactly. fighting IS. We all are, so we're, we have commonality here. Mm -hmm. And I think these are strong arguments that need to be had. Consulted with everybody else, though. This shouldn't be mm. just excluded a clique of, of, of leaders. Yeah. These are conversations we all need to have, because we're all paying the cost. Sure, let's move on now uh, to the China Daily. Uh, on the front page here, we've got Xi Jinping uh, mm. talking at the UN General Assembly like most world leaders were uh, over the last couple of days. He's talking about uh, millions being provided for the African Union in the next five years. A good initiative for, from China and, and vital money for Africa, surely. Incredible. Um, you know, I'm reminded by the great um, economist, African economist, Dambiso Moyo, who says actually mm. China isn't necessarily our enemy. Okay. Uh, we should be thinking that China is actually developing. But listen, China China needs a stable Africa in order, in order to invest. That's so right. They're, they're big they're, partners aren't they absolutely. Mm. They, they, they may not necessarily have us in interest. But listen, if we're getting roads and we're getting infrastructure, maybe we should be thinking to us about it. Nobody has come in. Um, and addedly, actually, to that, China has less baggage, colonial baggage, in Africa. So it doesn't carry the sort of the British and the French and the Portuguese baggage that other countries um, do carry on. But I think this is a great investment. Peace is a huge issue in Africa, increasingly so. It is the cause of all the underlying variables that we always discuss. Mm. And this, this is what the Chinese are doing. I, I, I'm, I'm inclined to welcome it. Here we are. Uh, next up, then, we have the Sydney Morning Herald of Australia. Uh, we've got stunning new evidence there, according mm. to the paper there. I mean, it's the main picture on the front page, too. Very, very sort of stark uh, image on the front page of Mars, or ancient Mars there, having the right, uh, that had all the right ingredients there to, to host life. And this could be a stunning development for uh, the planet which is nearest to us. How exciting. Yeah, God. absolutely. How I mean, exciting. it says that dark streaks on the surface there could uh, contain water-bearing salt. So the signs of life, all the ingredients are there. I mean, it's, it's really it's fascinating, to say the least, isn't it? Indeed. And water is the variable that you need on life. So mm -hmm. if you consider that a good proportion of our Earth is actually water, that's what you need to survive. So incredible that we should advance science to the point that we can actually make discoveries on a wider another planet. Exciting times. I think we, this will lead to further research, further findings. Who knows where it will take us? Mm -hmm. I'd like this kind of research opened up to, e to every every other person, though. So it's not just sort of excluded to a few people. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of science that children need to be learning from very early on. So the world is bigger than we think it is. Exactly right. And, of course, it ties into The Martian being released, of course, over the next few days. The, uh, yes. the big uh, Oscar, well, Oscar winning film, or set to win an Oscar, I think, by the sounds of it. Matt Damon's mm. in it, and there's a big old cast. Ridley Scott directed it. So very yeah. much current at, at, at the moment, a very in vogue uh, story there. Let's move on to The Times of South Africa. So on the front page here, mm. we've got uh, Trying for Trevor on the top left-hand corner. Trevor Noah making his debut on The Daily Show to... Uh, uh, what looks like critical acclaim at the moment, but yeah. the main story here, uh, visa fiasco by numbers, jobs on the line there as uh, tourist arrivals drop sharply mm. in the country. Mm. I suspect there are many issues underlying this. Um, 
a dropping economy, South Africa is still trying to tighten its immigration. There's a backdrop here of the attacks that we were featuring um, some months ago. Um, but for every tourist that doesn't go to South Africa, it's a missed opportunity for the South African economy. Mm -hmm. So they'll be diverting elsewhere. I'm hoping they're diverting to my country, which is Zimbabwe, because yeah. I think there's amazing um, tourism up there. But the country, is, this speaks to what is happening to South Africa. They're struggling here. And this was the biggest economy um, just over a year ago, overtaken by Nigeria. So I think uh, the economics of the country are suffering. Uh, it, uh, the Chinese will be, have been hit here because they wanted to invest in South Africa, being such a big economy, mm -hmm. and they're being restricted. So they're, yes, they are, you know, they're restricting themselves, but I think they're restricting themselves economically too. Dorcas Guata, thank you very much indeed. Uh, beautifully dressed as always. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, you're watching This Day Live here on Arise News. We'll be back after this short break with a sport and entertainment update. Stay with us.